All right, let's make a video series on TikTok. I find a beat, write the song, record the vocals, get a mix and mastered, and film music video all in the same day. And literally the first time we did that 24 hours thing, Pineapple was the song that came out of it. Pineapple was the number two most viral song in the world on Spotify. <laughs> that Kobe, man, job not done. <laughs> Job done? Job's not, job done? Job's not done? Job ain't finished. D-I-Y. I want to talk a little bit about something I read within your book that, uh, and I think it's going to usher us into the conversation about TikTok. Tell me a little bit about the impact of the pandemic for you and how that kind of switched gears for your business and really a lot of the things that you're doing today. Yeah, so before I was doing music, I had a photography, cinematography business. Mm -hmm. In hindsight, is an outlier and how I was able to do well in music when I started. I came from <laughs> content creation right. into a music career where content creation was what you needed in order to blow up. So, right. but I was doing photography and cinematography, shooting a lot of weddings, you know, events, small business stuff, the town where I live, I was shooting tourism stuff. COVID comes around as mandated quarantines and events are not a thing. So basically for how weddings work, you, you kind of book them like a year in advance or more or a little less, like that's how far out you get booked, right? So now all the weddings that I have in 2020 are being postponed, like everyone's moving their wedding. And what some people in a business did was they kept the deposit and said, all right, you have to book another date. But what we did was, because no one's in control of something like this, we didn't let any, like we didn't take anybody's money, we just rescheduled their dates. Right. But what that did for us is it gave us a year of no income. Right. The year of 2020 was just no income because wow. we didn't um, like I said, we didn't keep people's deposits and have them reach like we just moved their dates to the future. It wasn't their fault, you know, and it's nobody's fault. So we didn't want anybody have to like come out of pocket for that. Mm -hmm. So lost a whole year of income there. But what it did was it freed up my mind and my time to focus on music and to obsess over how do I treat this as a business and how do I blow up? Right. How do I get a song to go viral? How do I get a video to go viral? How do I all of those things. So it gave me the time really. Um, and that's one of the outliers is COVID help has helped me. I was able to have the extra mental load to focus on it and, and give it a real go. Cause I think where you put your focus is what's going to grow, you know? Sure. Sure. And, and it's something that was really timely of a message for me as I was reading your book was talking about not taking the out for an excuse when you have every right to make that mm -hmm. an excuse. Right. For instance, the uh, availability to, to record when, you know, your father, yeah. your husband, yeah. it, there's a lot of folks who yeah. are not in that kind of dynamic or that kind of relationship. They don't understand how you have to be so strategic about your, your creative mm -hmm. time and then hope in the midst of your strategy that the muse finds you and, and you're you're in that zone and you can produce some of your best right. work. So you really have to figure right. it out, man, something I love. I don't want to kill it for anybody else because it gave me pure goosebumps mm -hmm. talking about how you were recording in your car out there, yeah. even with the hum of the the heater in the background. Yeah. When you yeah. said that, you got to understand, I have a vent right here for my AC. And there's been many mm -hmm. times where my spoiled bread ass sits mm -hmm. here and I'm like, I can't <laughs> record. <laughs> The AC's on. It's summertime. Uh, like, you no. bread. So when I read that, it was one of those things where even somebody like me, 20 years into this, uh, it was sure. it was humbling to read because I was like, no, that that's a part of my personality as well. But I think mm. sometimes success can breed a little bit of comfortability. Mm. Can you talk a little bit about how you kind of maneuvered around in that space as a dad? Because I was really inspired. Yeah. So for me, it's family first, right? It's family. And in this time, it was family, photography, music. Like, that was the order of it because i was doing that other business but at this time our home is 950 square feet like our whole entire house is our first home starter home 950 square feet right. very small two bedrooms one bathroom you know like it's not much space in there and there's no place for me to go when other things need to be happening sure. so in the summer it was fine right the early stages of COVID, it was fine i was uh recording in my shed outside out of woodshed I was recording in there. I would record. No one was home. I recorded at the kitchen table. And actually a song I have called Intentions, I recorded on the couch in while everyone was sleeping. But the, the way I delivered, delivered the vocals, like very whispery. Right. But the reason I delivered it that way was because I had to, you know, because everyone wow. was sleeping. But <laughs> people ended up uh, loving that song. And then winter came around and it was, I can't record in the house anymore. It's too cold to record in the shed because winter's in Virginia. I mean, it could be 18 degrees, you know, you just Sheesh. don't know. It's just, 
it's like right now it's 95 outside and in the winters it could be low as yeah it could be low as 18 20 so yeah i had a minivan uh honda odyssey 2012 and i went i was like i need a place to record and it's freezing so i go out there i turn the van on it's running and my first setup was I had a box of merch, a box of hoodies in the back. Mm-hmm. And I just set my laptop on the box of hoodies and I would I recorded fifty masters in the back of the van. That's how it started. And then I ended up building this custom like table out of scrap wood that I had at the house. And then I came to realize there's a power outlet in the back of the van, like a AC outlet that I just didn't realize at first. I never oh, went wow. back to <laughs> and so now I could have power to my computer. So I, because before I'd have to charge it in the house, mm-hmm. come out, the focus right Scarlet would kill my battery. And oh my God, you know, I have horse an hour or 45 yeah. minutes or whatever it was, <laughs> you know. And then so then all of a sudden I got power. I'm like, no, I can sit out here for hours. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but I mean, it's freezing. So the heat's running, the engine's running. And if you solo the vocal and majority of those tracks, it's you can hear the hum of the engine or the, the heater running in the background. Of, you say you, oh, you did about 50 masters when you were having that setup, yeah. correct? What would you say was the most successful yeah. one of those? Because I'm, I'm sure those were some of the, the songs that we've come to enjoy today. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. This was around the time where I made like, so my whole album was made in there. My whole first album was made in there. This mm-hmm. can't be it. The whole album was made. Wow. Um, and then there's Mona Lisa was made in there. That was my first song that did my first video to do a million views was for my song Mona Lisa and that song was recorded there um Quarantine Summer was recorded there obviously because it was <laughs> <Come on>. right. <laughs> Quarantine. that's why I did the, the song Probably the only appropriate Summer. year at that point <laughs> um right 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 um I wouldn't call one of the because the first time I had like my first moment was fine apple so and that was back when everything started moving it was right at the cusp that was january 2021 i made fine apple so right when i got back into the studio but yeah can we talk a little bit about fine apple because i mean that that was the one where i didn't know that was you until i became familiar with you mm. and i doubled back and i was like this dude made fine apple because my, my wife is into <laughs> like uh nail content so she'll run through songs and she'll yeah. show me some of the songs that are trending just to kind of keep a, you know, cause she's younger than me just to keep a boomer up to date of what's going on. Walk in the room. Like I've been here confidence on me, like skincare, but I play it smooth. Cause I know what it took to make it here. They offered me a shortcut, but I'm cool. I will take the stairs. When you choose your own route, I hope you know that hate appears. Look how they look at the standout. Well, luckily, I can take the stairs. Morning when I wake up, check my phone. Why, yes, I made another sale. Then I read a comment about what I cannot do. Ha ha, just say you scared. I will not give in the fear, yeah. I am the truth in the dare, yeah. Let me just make you aware of the game. We no longer play in it fair. I get respect in the game, cause I really did it and never wrote checks for it. They gon' remember my name, I doubled the value and I paid the rest for it I, I remember that I drive around in my Ford Taurus on Firestone I dreamed about this life, I'm living in the present tense, now I'm finally home Yeah Come on, let me pop my shit But uh, she'll show me stuff and I'm listening to stuff and I'm like, oh, I like that, I like that And then I came back and I said that's fucking Nick D. That's Nick D. I just talked to him on the damn phone. So excuse my ignorance. I'm I'm literally getting introduced to your catalog and to what you do. But yeah. that seemed like that was such a, a, I was a huge moment. How did that not only affect, I guess, your presence on TikTok, but even, uh, you know, specifically Spotify's and, and the, the streaming platforms as well? Yeah, I can talk exactly how it went okay well the first thing cakes and i were like all right let's make a video series on tiktok i find a beat write the song record the vocals get it mix and mastered and film music video all on the same day that was like what mm. we were going to document 24 hours boom right and literally the first time we did that 24 hours thing fine out was the song that came out of it so which is also like a thing for like don't overthink it you know what i mean like <laughs> right <laughs> it was a the whole goal was to make a song in 24 hours film music video find a beat record mix and master all of it insane and Fine Apple was my first moment. So anyway, I did that and release it all in 24 hours. So mm-hmm. we ended up not doing the music video because we were like, no, this song's crazy. But anyway, uh, released it in January. And then I made like a few videos, stopped promoting it because it felt like a summer song. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was middle of winter. So I waited until probably April, late April, posted a couple more videos of it. And then ended up going viral in May. 
And when it went viral, this is how the streaming was affected. So first viral video, let's call it 7 million views. Mm -hmm. uh, song goes from 15,000 streams a day to 30 something, right? You'd okay. think it would go crazy, right? But it, it just like doubled. And then, but you follow it up with another video. The next video does like another few, million, 3 million, sure. Mm -hmm. And then that jumped it up to 70 something, right? Do another video. Next day it's at, now it's at 160. Mm -hmm. thousand streams a day and then you just keep videos piling up so it's and then it went into two 250 285 and then it did a little over three three hundred thousand streams a day yeah from there it's like unless you keep posting it it just right. kind of like comes down and finds a level finds a home wow. but the cool part was it gave me a new floor for my career you know mm -hmm. you know something that i myself as an independent artist have always been challenged with is because of the generation that i came from there was a I don't want to say it's an expiration date in terms of how you present a song visually, but mm. I'm still fighting and I'm trying to do my best to, to understand because it feels like I was talking to a, a marketer, um, my homegirl, Nikki Saunders about this. I said, it feels like I'm wearing the same t-shirt in different ways when I promote the same song with different multiple videos and multiple vertical videos. And so I find myself like, okay, first of all, I know I'm not talking to the same audience, but my brain thinks, They've already seen this. They've already seen this. You know, I, how many different looks can I give to the same exact mm -hmm. verse before the algorithm starts going opposite of me, before the audience is like, hey, we 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 get it. We get it. But can you kind sure. of explain how that was actually to your advantage to repurpose those videos? And it wasn't like you stopped promoting other songs at the same time. Right, right, right. right. No, yeah. No, I'm a big fan of promoting multiple things at the same time so that that doesn't happen and you know that part could be me overthinking it but i also often see a lot of people who only post the same song over and over again the comments are like we don't care lost right. interest you know all that stuff right <laughs> but for me it was like I, I would post a video for fine apple and then i'll post a video for another song the next mm -hmm. day i would do fine apple again the next day i would do a different song mm -hmm. and it, it worked to my advantage because kind of fast forwarding a little bit to my song icy pop I made the song Ice Pop in September, went viral in January, uh, early January of 2022. And Fine Apple was the number maybe two most viral song in the world on Spotify. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, all right, this is how I feel. This is how I think. It's probably not healthy. But I was like, all right, anybody can get one. You know, I was like, I've seen a lot of people get one. Right. <laughs> I haven't seen a lot of people get two or three yeah. or four. Yeah, right? yeah. So even through all that fine apple stuff, I wasn't really celebrating it. And that's probably not healthy, but like, I was, I was like, all right, what's next. Let's, let's keep going. Let's keep the momentum. I didn't take the minute to celebrate it, which I probably should have, but, um, is that the hooper in you I, by the way? Is that, is that the basketball? It, it might be. In you? Cause you know what, you, you know, know? They, that's, that's one of the one things I remember from when I, I mean, I was terrible at basketball, but the coaches would tell me like, stop celebrating. Like you, like you need mm. to act like you've been there before. You have to that like, Kobe man, <laughs> job not done. <laughs> Job done? Job's not, job done? Job's not done? Job ain't finished. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, because when I, whenever, and it's funny, because I've met other artists who have killed it in content and killed it in music, who just so happen to also be like, oh, I play college hoops. And I wonder how much of that kind of like finds its way mentality. into. Mentality. Yeah, the yeah. mentality. But then also, you just said it yourself. It seems like you're correcting yourself. Like, that's not, I know that's not healthy. I know that's not healthy. But there's a lot of things we do that are oh, yeah. healthy. <laughs> yeah. This like, is like looking back, you know, someone right. had to like help me realize it's a win. Someone told me, mm. you know, is a, they said you, you should realize how few people get this opportunity, Facts. right? Like, cause fine apple was a top 40 hit radio song or pop radio song. I don't know the exact terminology for whatever, but it was top Insane. 40. And it was like, you should celebrate that because not many people can say that they've had a top 40 Mm -hmm. hit radio song but yeah back to the icy pop where i was like anybody could get one so the the bigger moment for me was when icy pop went viral so I, icy pop was also in the top 50 most viral songs in the united states and then sheesh what i did there which is what most people wouldn't do they they wouldn't release another song they would just drive that one home sure. but as soon as icy pop went viral i released another song that friday which is serotonin so then I was doing ice pop videos and serotonin videos alternate on each days. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was both of those songs were in the top viral 50 most songs in the United States at the same time. Wow. And at that time, I hadn't seen anybody do that. I hadn't seen anybody 
that was not only to, I've seen people get in there twice, but not both songs at the same time. And then I was like, and then I was just kind of like chasing that, like, all right, let me see if I can replicate and replicate. And it does this work. And that's why I'm so confident when I speak about the things in my YouTube channel, the things in my book is like, because I did it. And not only did I do it once, I did it with Icy Pop. I did it with Pineapple. I did it with Icy Pop. Mm -hmm. I did it with Serotonin. I did it with Minefield. I did it with Sundown. I did it with uh, Still Hot with Connor. Like I've, I've had six songs in the top 50 most viral songs. And that's why I know, and I'm just, I believe in what I'm saying because it's, it, it's worked and it's been replicable, you know? DIY. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace.